Hello again, everyone. I had to go put on a sweatshirt. I don't like being cold. Um, I'm going to read you chapter 7 of Amy's Eyes, which is extremely short, possibly the shortest chapter of the book, and I might just throw it in with chapter 6 on Thursday. Wednesday? Whatever. Chapter 7. As I walked by myself and talked to myself, myself said unto me, Look to thyself, take care of thyself, for nobody cares for thee. On the following days, Amy became as quiet and withdrawn as an undiscovered island. When she was not absolutely required to be elsewhere, she sat on her bed and stared out her window toward the sea. And in some private and nether space inside herself, that did not include a single other person or piece of furniture in the dormitory, she waited and worried. Her mind was on the captain, and on the quick and unexpected dangers that might befall a very little man gone alone into a wonderful and terrible world. He might already have been trampled by a horse, or destroyed by the next dog down the roadway. But Amy did not cry for him. There would have been no one to comfort her in any case. Miss Eclair was no longer at St. Anne's. She had been dismissed from service. Miss Quince was the cause. In bitter diligence, Miss Quince had searched the grounds near the gates where the captain had done battle with the dog, and had found an iron uh, clasp torn from the leather bag, where the captain had made his heroic stand. The clasp was fashioned uh, in the shape of a monogram, and the letters that lay against one another were Miss Eclair's initials. Also, Miss Quince found more evidence in the library. A chair was out of place again and the dusty footprint on the plush velvet exactly matched the size and pattern of Amy's shoes. It was remembered that Miss Eclair had stayed alone in the library when Mrs. Hill and Miss Quince had left. The evidence was circumstantial, but when Miss Eclair was confronted with it, she confessed to her part in the captain's escape. She argued with Miss Quince and pleaded with Mrs. Hill that what had come about was best. It was a better conclusion, so she said, than either the boy's home or the bread box. For after all, he might return when he has grown up, she said. Return? A sailor? Not likely, said Miss Quince. Mrs. Hill was in sympathy with Amy and the captain, but there were such rules of conduct applied to the ladies of St. Anne uh, that there was nothing for Mrs. Hill to do but dismiss Miss Eclair from service, as much as she regretted having to do so. And so Miss Eclair had to leave behind the child she loved most. When Miss Eclair came to say goodbye to Amy, it was to Amy one, uh, one emptiness falling into another, and she could not even raise a tear. It was as if Miss Quince's hands were choking off her life deep inside. So even though Amy loved Miss Eclair very much, she could make only a listless goodbye and brush an almost indifferent kiss to Miss Eclair's cheek. Miss Eclair promised to write soon. Amy nodded and looked away vacantly. Then Miss Eclair left her sitting alone on her bed. Amy ate little and played not at all in the days after the captain had escaped and Miss Eclair had been fired. Although the other girls wanted much more information concerning the captain and how he came to be, Amy gave them nothing, neither could she be drawn into any talk about the battle at the gate. As yet, the other girls were having no luck with their own dolls, though many of them had been coddled and kissed nearly to threads. Amy only shrugged at their questions and moved away to, uh, to stand or sit apart and to wait and worry about the captain. Then, three weeks after the captain had made his escape from St. Anne's, the postwriter brought two letters for Amy. One was from the captain, and one was from Miss Eclair. Now it was Miss Quince who always seemed to be on hand and nearby to answer the postwriter's whistle at the front gate. It was a duty that she was not properly charged with, but that she undertook out of nosiness. This day, she sorted through the letters. She found the captain's letter to Amy. The return address said, The Captain, General Delivery, New Liberty. New Liberty was the nearby t seaside town. A nicely drawn sailing ship decorated a corner of the envelope. Miss Quince's hands were all over the captain's letter before she stuck it inside the bosom of her apron. She also found the letter from Miss Eclair and it followed the captain's letter out of sight. Miss Quince left the rest of the letters off at the office, 
then snuck the two hidden letters up to her room. There she ripped both open, read them, and gloated over them. I wonder if she's related to Snape. It seems likely. She's probably his aunt or older sister. 